Hi, good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Kazuya Katagiri, and thank you very much for inviting me to be here. I'm very excited to uh, introduce some of the projects that we're doing here. And, <clears throat> and also, very uh, thank you very much for a nice introduction of myself. That, yeah, I uh, fly from Tokyo and arrived uh, to Netherlands in this morning. And flight was uh, 20 hours, but yes, I'm ready <laughs> to uh, show some of the projects here. And also the brief introduction of myself that um, after graduating the school, the Master of Architecture in Illinois Institute of Technology, uh, just after finishing school, I started uh, my own practice with my partner in Mexico. And so actually, like uh, my career started uh, when I was 24 years old in Mexico. Then uh, five years of practicing there, uh, mainly working for residential projects. And I decided to come back to Japan. And I started working for Kengo Kuma. And during the st uh, stay in the office, uh, mainly I was working for a museum project in Scotland. And that time, Ken Okuma office was not as international as right now in this point. So uh, actually that project was one of the uh, kind of leading project uh, in the entire office. And after four years, I uh, finished the uh, office and I started doing my practice again, uh, called Katagiri Architecture and Design in 2014. And at the same time, uh, Kuma was uh, teaching at the University of Tokyo. So I was uh, invited to uh, be a teaching assistant there for uh, six, seven years until 2020. So my office is uh, literally very small office, mainly working for a residential project and then some of the commercial projects. And at the same time, also, we are, are doing the um, kind of experimental art installation as well. So with this uh, installation, like experimentation and then pra practical architectural design, those are the two main uh, items that we are doing. <clears throat> so uh, the, I uh, was asked about talk about the boundary since the, uh, the theme of the event is about the boundary. So the boundary is uh, some of the topic that I was also really interested in for a long time. And then uh, today's uh, talk, the theme that I put was a boundary as a particles. So I looked up the dictionary about the boundary to check the general dis uh, definition about the term. And it says a real or imagined line that makes the limit or edge of something and separates it from one to another things or place, a dividing line. So that's what the dictionary says about the boundary. And also these are the buildings that it's uh, from, I'm from Nagano, and these are the buildings that um, uh, it's in from my hometown that I kind of look up and also play with uh, since the kids, and very familiar uh, kind of uh, traditional architecture building. And this uh, loose, like a, they have like a three layers of uh, the timber uh, beams which is very small sticks uh, kind of uh, layered together to create a big roof. Why they're doing the, uh, this kind of a uh, complex geometry is because to uh, use the small diameter of the timber to create a big uh, scale uh, roof so that the, you don't need to have a, a big trunk of the trees, but smaller uh, kind of uh, bushes still can be able to create a big one loop. And also the, the, uh, the center image is, it's a kind of difficult to see, but it's a lifted foundation that the many buildings uh, in the mountainside of uh, Japan is uh, built on the 
kind of sloped area so that the buildings are raised up uh, from the ground to create this kind of uh, geometry. And also the right side hand, it's very typical Japanese uh, sliding door uh, with the, the uh, washi paper. So these are the elements that create the boundary, but it seems that um, image that's shown here is not drawn by a single line, but the assembly of many small particles. And this is very typical construction uh, site image in Japan, that the architecture space is composed of uh, many, many different uh, uh, kind of aggregates or elements to create one big space. And each aggregates are kind of a, a place in a very rational relationship with the structural uh, stabilities or uh, economical reasons as well. So that this kind of a unique rhythm is eventually hidden behind the wall uh, once uh, the wall cover and the finishings are coming. So my idea or my interest here is to reveal the rhythm and the beauty of the discipline that the building originally has as a substructure to create the, the architectural space so that it's not just uh, the divided by a very simple single line, but a bunch of uh, aggregates or particles. So this is uh, the tea house project that uh, we are, uh, actually this is a really, really first project that we worked on as a, uh, an installation project. It's a small uh, tea house, that the mobile tea house, that made out of only uh, washi paper. It's 4,000 pieces of washi paper unit. And actually the client was asked us initially to uh, create a paper pavilion, then Usually the paper are kind of mounted on the frame to create some kind of screens or so on. But we really wanted to purely uh, create a space, only the paper material. So we look into uh, the traditional uh, origami technique to create a, a module that has uh, two pockets and two points so that the each uh, units are slicing each other to support the, the entire shape. And actually, uh, this shape is defined by the weight of the paper and then friction uh, of the material itself. So this is a sequence of uh, uh, construction. So in five people, uh, we spent uh, eight hours uh, to build uh, from zero to the end. So usually paper is very flexible and fragile, uh, kind of flappy materials, but once uh, this kind of a uh, unit assemble together, it creates a really massive uh, feeling about the materiality. And also you can feel the texture of the paper itself and it's very insulated. So once you are inside, you are really uh, separated from outside world. So actually the tea house, this is only for one person tea house, but once you're in, like you can really uh, meditate inside. And uh, so nice to enjoy for one person for tea. And then also assembly of the paper material it also creates a very, very uh, unique uh, uh, kind of geometry that it's almost like uh, the cell of the living creatures, like a human uh, skins or animals, also vegetables as well. So in the end, like once uh, the uh, pavilions are in the space, it's almost like a living creatures so that uh, the surface is not just simple skin, but uh, creating assembly of many, many uh, small pieces 
uh, of aggregates. And then through the study of uh, finding the geometry, uh, using the same modular system, and then this uh, kind of rule that has two pockets and uh, two sticks, um, we found that the, uh, the way to kind of um, compose uh, each unit as a local rule and then the output will be really diverse, many different variety of shape that we can uh, output. So it depending on how you want to create a space as a dome shape or like a walls, uh, the kind of weaving walls, it depends on how you uh, kind of uh, put together of each unit. And then this is uh, another project, uh, but with the same um, uh, material, uh, same units, that we brought all the materials to Hong Kong and then built a small kind of wall type tea house. So that this shows how you uh, communicate with the unit and the local rules, but we kind of uh, uh, kind of mimicking and uh, how to expand as a kind of a global output will make a really different uh, uh, kind of form of architecture in a very simple form, uh, simple rule. And then the next project is uh, a paper pavilion. So the initial idea that we had was uh, if we can create the architecture space like a bubble, then the bubble is, uh, is a balance between internal uh, pressure and the outer uh, pressure that is equal, equalized to stabilize uh, one uh, kind of uh, unique geometry. So with the idea of bubble, like we're trying to uh, create the minimum mass by expanding the maximum volume. So this project was uh, built in uh, the city of Montpellier in south side of France. That um, uh, the city, old town, is made out of uh, the stone uh, masonry. So we're trying to create uh, kind of respecting the rhythm of the city, of the masonry, but uh, try to kind of make contrast with the materiality, with the paper. So the paper masonry structure is synchronizing the uh, scale, but also at the same time contrasting the materiality. So it's a very transparent uh, masonry system. And what we did, is the paper, again, it's a very floppy uh, materials, but once you make a cylinder shape, then that creates kind of structural stability on the vertical. Uh, Hello, okay. And so this, this cylinder uh, structure is creating uh, the stiffness, structural stiffness on the vertical directions so the cylinder, like we have uh, four cuts in the top and the four cuts in the bottom. So the ones you uh, slice into each other to create uh, the modular system that you can expand. And then we, uh, before going to the side, like we're creating uh, many uh, types of uh, physical models. This time, like we did the one to 10 uh, physical model, a mock-up, together with uh, the 3D model. So we always using the 3D model and physical model together. So this is something that is very important, that um, the local rules uh, you can control with the physical model partially, and then the larger scale uh, you can also control in the 3D model. So these two combination, uh, it's always uh, how we work. And also this time, the budget was really limited. 
so that uh, we have to bring all the materials uh, by check-in luggage of the airplane from Tokyo to Paris. So in total of six uh, cardboard box we checked in. So the, um, the volume is 0 0.25 uh, cubic meter, but the, the final output is 25 cubic meter. So it's like a, a hundred times uh, bigger. It's like a bubble. So this is the sequence of the construction. So just simply rolling, rolling, rolling all the time to the paper to create one unit and then stacking, stacking. Very, very simple rule. But then um, this masonry uh, structure in the massive uh, stone masonry that creates a really nice contrast between the stone and paper and also a solid and light. And also each cell uh, is kind of capturing the light, the natural light in the uh, body of structure. And it will create a, a kind of time changing uh, the color in time. And this type, kind of smaller particles blends into the surrounding stonescape. It's like a bubble. It's merging to the space. And then uh, it's really another important uh, kind of point that we always uh, aim into is for people to understand uh, the law of the structure. So even for kids, like uh, this space, uh, they can understand like uh, how this space is composed of. So eventually like uh, this, uh, kids can help uh, building the structure. So it's very, very uh, a democratic uh, type of building uh, system that we can create. So we have been like experimenting this, uh, the modular system, how to expand from small to big. And we applied uh, this system to the interior design in this project. And this was um, the project in the south side of Japan. That is, uh, the seaside is called Muroto, uh, Muroto in uh, Kochi. And the site is uh, the existing uh, whale museum that they asked us to uh, create the small furniture to exhibit uh, their uh, brochures and also put the souvenirs on. And then this scenery, like we are uh, kind of inspired by the picture of George Surat. this uh, famous uh, Normandy uh, seascape. This picture is like uh, created by uh, many uh, pieces of dots as uh, particles to create one big surface. So this was the idea of how the surface will be composed of. And through the particles, like uh, you can create a connection between uh, inside and outside and through this type of uh, structure unit. So again, uh, initially like uh, we are asked to design uh, the tables and the furniture to exhibit their uh, artworks and also uh, brochures. But the first time like I visited the space, the windows are completely closed because um, the direct sun is hitting to the space, even it's just in front of the uh, ocean, but the most of the time space are closed to the ocean. So we asked them, instead of having a kind of table type of uh, exhibition space, but doing something like a, that 
we can cut the sunlight, but at the same time, we can create a shelf that they exhibit uh, their own product. So we started from the left side, uh, kind of single uh, stool, like uh, furniture, and then uh, stacking uh, each other to create a big uh, truss system. And actually, like one small unit is very unstable, but once you are uh, uh, putting all the elements together, it, it creates the truss so that it's really a stiff structure. And then also the material is very, very thin. And actually this uh, timber, the thickness is nine millimeter and then stuck up up to uh, uh, 2.7 meter. And in order to do this, uh, we uh, went to a local mountain to find the cypress tree that has a really high oil content so that the timber is very uh, resistant in the bending moment. So we pick up the special uh, trees to process to uh, create the thin uh, timber laminate uh, plane and then cut in the CNC and then to create the furniture like this. So uh, starting from the stool and then uh, becomes benches and then expand it to counter and shelf, and then eventually to a, a space, architectural scale. So starting from the very small elements, but in the way that you can expand it to many different types of output here. And then the left side image, you can cut the sun from the outside to inside, but at the same time, from the other side, like you can connect the view to the ocean. So in the end, originally the space was really close from the ocean, but through this furniture, like you can uh, make a really uh, smooth connection between the inside and outside, also the space to the ocean, so that the, the visitor can enjoy uh, the very beautiful scenery and also the changing in time, the scenery changes. And the next project is uh, we design uh, exhibition space uh, for uh, the ceramic company in Japan that they have uh, the branch office in uh, San Jose, Silicon Valley. So they are asked to uh, create the white cube space to exhibit their product in the space. So the space is in the fourth floor of a typical uh, office building, but surrounded by very beautiful uh, the, uh, trees so that you can see from the windows um, very, very beautiful trees here. So what we are trying to do is subtracting all the unnecessary elements from the space as much as possible. And also like a polish in the floor as much as possible so that the, the very beautiful uh, scenery is reflecting on the floor. So it's not simply a white cube, but uh, we're trying to create the floor as a media to uh, reflect the scenery outside. And also we created the, uh, the screen in the entry area. So this one is captured um, the idea of the company that the ceramic is made out of a stone. So we kind of capture, insulated the, the, the stone materials in the screens in front so that you can see the light coming through 
uh, these beautiful uh, panels. And then here is a meeting area that we embed the spark plugs under the glass floor to showcase their legacy. These 10,000 uh, 10, pieces of spark plugs are under uh, the floor. Also reflects very beautifully to the scenery. And then this high polished concrete floor becomes a kind of medium to reflect the surrounding environment. Also, like we um, take out all the ceilings and then the walls, and so that becomes very pure uh, white cube in the space. And then we can exhibit their product in the center of the space. And also the other side, a 20 meter wide wall, it's a projection wall that uh, projects in the manufacturing factory in Japan so that they can virtually uh, experience uh, the factory that the spark plugs are made. So this 18 display table showcases uh, many different uh, a kind of uh, technique of the company. So the exhibition through this uh, uh, modular uh, uh, furniture, like they can see through uh, what they are doing as a company and with the virtual experience on the wall. So this reflective white cube is also blurring the space between the physical and virtual. This is some like a unique experience that the visitor can experience. It's physical, but also at the same time you see a reflective uh, image on the floor. And then this project uh, we have been doing, we just completed the residential project in Tokyo. And this is very typical city grid in Tokyo that is overly fragmented, the site plot. Originally, like each plot are quite big, but in the uh, time the generation changes, the original owner is trying to split the site as much as possible to sell so that um, uh, the site plot is starting uh, smaller and smaller. So that's how uh, the uh, typical Tokyo scenery that, uh, with a lot of small buildings are conjected in uh, a kind of a site plot here. So our site is 4.7 meter uh, wide and then 11.5 meter uh, depth, very tiny site, very congested. They only allowed to open the view to the south side, only one side. So we don't have uh, any other surfaces that you can open except the uh, roof. So we're trying to uh, create the, the void space on the rooftop to create uh, 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 the opening that uh, natural light is coming down through. Also at the same time, this becomes the staircase. So the staircase that brings light into the space. And then within this, like a very limited uh, building footprint, actually the staircase is occupied one fifth of the building. Usually it's very enclosed space, but uh, this project that we're trying to uh, use the staircase to connect the space in between. And the buffering the space with the light and the air. And this permeable buffer space is created with a uh, 30 millimeter uh, very thin steel rod. 
that supporting also the staircase as well. Since uh, the, uh, the natural light that coming from the roof is very direct light, it's very harsh. So we're trying to uh, kind of break uh, the light very softly and then coming down to the space through this uh, very thin slot of structure. So each room on the skip floor is seamlessly connected uh, by the uh, spiral staircase. So it's all, all, like all one big space, but also uh, kind of subdividing subdivided by this, uh, the structure hall. So this spiral brings uh, people from up to uh, the third floor. And the light coming from the sky very softly taken to the space. And then also the time changes, the color of the light changes, and also season as well. So we're trying to kind of capture the light as much as possible uh, in a soft way, not really a hard uh, direct light. And then this subdivided structure gives a rhythm of the space that we're trying to capture. So the assembly of the uh, aggregate of particles. So this uh, aggregate, how uh, you compose uh, the particles are the, the theme that I usually working on. And at the same time, this aggregate, it has to be rationalized in a way uh, that it supports the structure and then as well also defining uh, the separation between one to another. So uh, my topic throughout the pavilion project to the spatial project, um, we start in um, the smaller module and which is um, very carefully look into uh, materiality and then find the kind of uh, uh, rhythm and also uh, uh, character that ex can be expanding to the larger scale. So the paper and timber and also the steel, depending on materials, like you can find also craftsmanship, through the craftsmanship, you can find how to uh, assemble and create a larger scale module, starting from the very small scale. Okay, thank you.